What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to give you guys a sneak peek into Metro 2 by Metal. Now, throughout the years, I've worked on a whole bunch of different shows for Transformers, from Rescue Bots to Robots in Disguise to Cyberverse. I mean, the list goes on. And so for this sneak peek, I actually want to take a Transformers logo, bring it into After Effects, turn it into 3D, and kind of just show you the magic of Metro. And so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I'm starting with After Effects open here. This is the scene that I was testing out earlier. You can see we have the Transformers logo here. It's all extruded out in 3D. And so this is exactly what I'm gonna show you guys how to make. So I'm gonna start by creating a new composition. So I'm gonna come over here on my left-hand side, hit new comp, and I'm just gonna name this one new. Make sure it's 1920 by 1080 because that's what I wanna work in HD. Click OK. So now I have a full new composition here. So my first step is I'm gonna bring my Transformers logo into my scene here and if I click S you can see that we have the scale come up here and I'm just going to make this 50% actually 25 I just want to have this full screen within our composition here and so the next step is to make a solid file so if I right click down here in the timeline click on new click on solid and then I'm going to just have a black solid here which I'm going to name mantra because this is what I'm going to put my mantra effect onto Click on make comp size so that make sure that it's 1920 by 1080 and then click OK. And so now our next step is to come over on our right hand side under effects and presets and I already have it selected over here. But if you look here under metal, you'll see this node called Mantra Graphics and this is exactly what we're going to want to use to bring our logo into 3D. So if I bring my Mantra Graphics on top of my black solid that I brought here. You can see now we have in our attributes window a bunch of things here. And so our first step is going to be to go to projected layer. And I'm actually going to click on none and then come down to my Transformers PSD. And I'm going to select that. And then you can see here on the left hand side that in our comp window, we now have our Transformers logo. And this is all from within Mantra. And so my next step is I want to go to my frame layout because I'm working in flat um, HD. But in Mantra, you can actually work in 360 VR as well. So you can work in monoscopic 360 VR, or you can work in stereo, three, um, stereo 360 VR with the over under or side by side. But I want to click on flat because I'm working on a flat composition. And so now my next step is to come over to scale here. I'm just going to raise this up a little bit, maybe like around 120 just to make it a little bit larger in our composition. Actually, let me raise it up a little bit more. There we go, like around 150. So if you see here on my right hand side, underneath my scale, we have a tab called extrusion. So over here, we can actually have control over like the depth, the bevel along the corners, and we actually have control over UV mapping as well, because we can also put materials on here. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit here. And so I'm going to add a little bit of extrusion here and you're not going to like you can see it looks like it's puffing up and that's because we have to light our scene so that we can see the depth that it's extruding to. But for my extrusion depth, I'm going to go really high and just make this like 500. And then for my bevel depth, um, let's go about like 20. And let me zoom in here a little bit. You can see that some stuff is starting to happen, but you can't exactly see what yet. And I'll show you guys here in a little bit. Uh, for my contour threshold, I usually bring it down a little bit lower. So anywhere in between one and 10. And that just, I find that sharpens up my model a little bit there. And then, um, yeah, so that's looking pretty good there. So what I wanna come down to now is come under my light and I wanna enable point light. And once I click on this, you'll see that we're gonna to start to get the shadows and depths and everything within our 3D model here. There we go, it just took a second to kick in. And usually it works a little bit faster, but my image that I'm using, I'm using a really high res image, which is, if you look over here in my upper left hand corner, you can see that it's 3041 by 3131. And I found that the higher of the resolution of the image, the crisper to 3 object you get, but also you might have a little bit of slowdown too. It might just take a second or two for some of the effects to kick in, but it's not too bad there. And so I wanna have control over my lighting. So if I come over like under my light elevation, I can actually move this around 
and you can see that we're having our light affect our 3D object here. So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, something around there. No, let's bring it over a tad bit. So I like to really get like some mood lighting in here. You can really see the extrusion and the bevel and the depth within our 3D object here. And then you can also change this attribute above it to move, rotate your light even more. So let's bring it down. It looks like 72 is pretty good. So if I zoom out here, you can see on the right hand side, we have really nice shadows coming along. And then we actually have specular highlights here on our left hand side. So that brings me to our next point. We have this material tab over here on the right hand side. And so I have this, this, um, I guess you call it like a middle, like a scratched up metal material that I'm going to use for this example. And so I'm just going to drag that into my timeline down here, just underneath everything. And then I'm going to go back to my mantra tab, come over to material and I'm going to go to texture and I'm going to select that image that I just brought in here. So I'm going to select that. And you can see now inside my transformers logo, we have the scratched up metal. Like it's all surrounding our 3d object as if we're working like cinema 40 or 3d max. It's the same exact way we're texturing here. And we also have control over a specular or roughness in our metal. So if I want to bring my middle all the way up, we could get some really cool effects in here and bring my roughness down. So we're making it like more of a shiny metal texture. Let's see what happens if we play with our specular levels. Bring my roughness down a little bit more. Somewhere around there. And it's getting a little bit dark, but you know, you get the idea. You play around with these until you find something that you're happy with. And not only can we play around with our materials, we can actually light our whole 3D object with like an HDR file or any file in particular. But I like using HDRs because it's full 360 lighting. So if you go over here under environment, you have the option to be able to light your scene with the HDR. So I have this HDR here that I grabbed off of hdrhaven.com, which you get free HDRs off of. So I'm just going to click and drag that into my timeline now. And now I'll click back on Mantra. Then I'm going to come over here and go under my environment tab, go under environment map, and let me click that HDR file that I just brought in. And then we also want to make sure that we click enable IBL. And you can see our image just got brighter and that's because it's being lit by our HDR map. So if I come over to my light and let me turn this point light off, we can kind of just get an idea of exactly what our HDR is doing to our scene. So if I bring up the intensity here, give us a second to load, you can see that it's lighting our scene with just that map. And what I like to do is I like to use both. So I like to use the HDR map and the light. So the HDR will bring in like the real world lighting and then the light I can add like the extra specular glints and everything off the extrusion, something like that. And if you notice too, like the front of the um, 3D object looks pretty good with the material, but on side the inside here of my extrusion is starting to get really stretched out. And we can actually fix that by coming up over here under extrusion. And so remember I, could, I told you that you can play around with your UV mapping. You actually have two options here. You can stretch it like so, or you can actually click on wrap and you'll see that it's gonna fix our 3D object here. And now we have a nice material going around a 3D object. And so I think that's about everything I want to show you in Mantra. Oh yeah, let me go over to my model transform. I can actually rotate my model in 3D space. So let me go to my X and move this back a little bit, like in a negative space. And you can actually see now we're rotating our 3D object. Same thing here. You have all the controls over everything you would in a natural 3D project. You can actually move it along the X, Y, Z axis as well. So if you want to have it flying towards the camera, go negative space here for my position Z and it's actually bringing it towards us. So you have a whole bunch of control here for your object. And it's like, you know, whenever I had my, um, whenever you're working in Mantra, like, let me turn off my material here. 
you can see that we have like this red material and that's because my original Transformers logo here is actually red. And so it's gonna pull off of the color value from your original projection here. But let me go back to Mantra. If I turn back on my material, so I'm gonna go back to my gloss material here. And then let me come down to my timeline and come under my gloss. I'm gonna solo this out so we can just see this. Now this is the little trick that I pulled up. So if I go over here and click in Tritone and just use the typical After Effects Tritone, you can actually go to Midtones or whatever you wanna do, but I'm using Midtones so that I can keep my, my highlights and my blacks. But you can actually pick a different color in here and I'll show you how to bring this through on your Mantra file. So let's say I wanted to use something like that, this bluish color. So I'm gonna unsolo this come back to Mantra and you can see that it's still the gray. But if I come under my material layer here, and if I go to texture and then go under source, we have an option here called effects and mask, which if you use After Effects, you should be familiar with this. It's in a lot of effects here. But if I click on that, you can see now our color value actually pops through on our mask here. Or not our mask, but our 3D object. And so I'm actually gonna turn off my material here because I kind of like this nice, shiny, reflective material here, but that's basically it for how you can make 3D objects out of Mantra. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you want more information on Mantra version two and when it's gonna be released, make sure you go to metal.com and check out for updates on there. And as always, keep creating. I'll see you in the next video. Click that subscribe button, it helps me out. I'll see you next time. Take care.